Now for this problem then, what I've done is I've copied the diagram that we're given. And we've got to work out what P is. But whenever I get diagrams like this where I've got a force pushing into a particle, I always like to draw that force coming out the other side. It makes the problem a lot easier, I feel. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get rid of this P first of all and draw that P coming out from the center here out to the right, okay? So we've got that as P Newtons. Now we need to mark on some other forces. We've got the weight, so the weight acts downwards. The mass, we're told, is 0.4 kilograms, so the weight would be mg or 0.4 g Newtons. Because this particle is in contact with the surface, then there's going to be a normal contact force, a force acting at right angles to that surface. And I'm going to call that R, R Newtons. We're told it's a rough plane and the particle is on the point of going up the plane. So that means that friction is limiting. It's reached its maximum value, in other words. And we should know that when that occurs, that frictional force, F, is always equal to mu r. And mu, coefficient of friction, we're told is a third, so it's going to be a third r newtons. So that's essentially my force diagram. Now normally in questions where we've got a particle on a plane, what we tend to do is resolve parallel to the plane and perpendicular to the plane. But with this question, this, this is an exception. You can do that if you want, but it's a lot harder to do because you're going to find that you do end up having to solve simultaneous equations. Now with this, because this particle is in equilibrium, what I would suggest you do is that you think of the vertical and the horizontal directions to resolve in. This is very unusual. Certainly I wouldn't encourage you to do this if you had a particle moving, accelerating, but when it's in equilibrium we can get away with this. Now why am I doing it like this? Well, the first question asks us to find out what R is. And that will mean that because R is inclined away from this vertical position, we're going to have to use the one component of R, as you'll see in a moment. So our equation is going to involve R. It's going to involve this force, because this force is not on this vertical line. But it's not going to involve P, which is an advantage. P is perpendicular to this direction, the vertical, so it won't enter the equation. So we'll just have an equation with R in and that will be easy to solve. So that's the reason why I'm going for resolving in the vertical sense. So now it's up to you whether you decide you want to resolve upwards or downwards. It makes no difference. But I'm going to resolve upwards. Okay, you could try it downwards if you like and see what you get. You should end up with the same answer, obviously. We need a few angles around here as well. So normally we put a dotted line down in here when we're doing angles with planes. So this angle in here would normally be alpha. We'll mark it in. That means that this angle over here is alpha. And we have alternate angles here. These two lines are parallel, so alpha shows up in here as well. So that would be my diagram. Now, I'm going to take out this alpha here because we're not going to need it anymore. Let's just get rid of that, okay? So we've got the cross situation. So when it comes to resolving, we're looking at the resultant force acting in the vertical sense. And that resultant force is going to be zero because this particle is not moving. So what have we got? Well, part of our acts upwards. R can be split into two components. So 
in other words you've got your R here let's just sketch it over here normally I wouldn't draw this in but I'm just putting it in just to show you that we can split R into a component that way and a component this way if you're unsure about this I've done this in some tutorials on resolving forces you might like to look at later on so this is the angle alpha so this component upwards because it contains the angle is going to be R cos alpha it's always cosine when it contains the angle and when it excludes the angle it's R sine alpha is the amount of force acting in that direction R sine alpha newtons R cos alpha newtons so when it comes to looking at the force from R in the upward sense it's this amount R cos alpha so if we resolve upwards we've got R cos alpha as for the P none of the P acts in this direction it's perpendicular so we can omit this from the equation that's my point okay we don't have that in the equation so it's gonna make it a lot simpler now we come down to the weight all of the weight acts in the vertical sense but it's in the opposite sense to our plus direction so it's going to be minus 0.4 g newtons now we come on to the frictional force the third r newtons but because this is offset to the vertical we need to think of splitting this into two components and if we drew that back in let's just draw it over here okay we've got our frictional force acting down the plane a third r newtons just put the r in there r newtons and we can split this into two components one in this direction and one in this direction the angle alpha is in here as you can see so the component that contains the angle will be cosine so this will be one third r cos alpha newtons acting to the left and downwards it will be one third r sine alpha newtons okay because it excludes the angle so when it comes to resolving upwards what component of the frictional force acts along here well it's only this one the third r sine alpha it acts in the opposite sense to our arrow so it's going to be minus minus one third r sine alpha and this is the resultant force acting on the particle in the vertical sense and because it's in equilibrium that resultant is zero now we have one equation here then that is in one unknown r we know something about alpha we were told earlier that tan alpha equaled three quarters now let's just use that fact that we know that tan alpha equals three quarters now you could work out what alpha is but you don't have to do that you could work out alpha by doing the inverse tan of three quarters but no what we, you can think of is a right angle triangle something like this all we're dealing with is a ratio of sides for every three we, we rise up here we're going along four units in this direction remember tan is opposite over adjacent and by Pythagoras's theorem this side is the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared square root of 25 which is 5 the familiar 3 4 5 triangles we should know so when it comes to working out what cos alpha is cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse so it would be 4 fifths 4 over 5 so we can fill this in without having to work out what alpha is so we've got r multiplied by cos alpha so that as I say is going to be 4 fifths let's just put the 4 fifths in the front 4 fifths r now if you work out what 0.4 times g times 9.8 is you'll find you get 3.92 so that's going to be minus 3.92 and then here we've got a third of r times sine alpha and sine alpha is opposite over hypotenuse 3 fifths so you've got minus one third 
times three fifths r. Just put that in there, three fifths r. And that equals zero. Now, a third of three fifths is really one fifth. These threes cancel. So what we've got here is four fifths r minus a fifth r. So that's going to be three fifths r. So we've got therefore three fifths r equals, if we add 3.92 to both sides, we just get equals 3.92. So to get r, we just simply have to multiply by 5 and divide both sides by 3. So you've got 5 times 3.92 over 3. And if you work that out, you end up with 6.53 recurring. So I just put a dot over the top of that 3. And if we round this up, say, to three significant figures, then we've got 6.53 newtons to three significant figures. So that is our contact force of our newtons. All right?